All right, welcome back to Fabani Solutions PowerPoint presentation. Today we're going to be talking about pediatric procedures in regards to PKU, blood draw neonates, and capillary heel sticks. All right, let's talk about PKU and why we would do PKUs and a capillary heel stick on an infant. Now, what does PKU stand for? It stands for phenylketonuria, and this test is done to check whether a newborn baby has a specific enzyme that's needed to process certain foods. And it's part of a protein. It's also an amino acid that is needed for normal growth and development. And if the baby does not have that enzyme, uh, then, of course, it can cause problems, brain damage, seizures, and also mental retardation. Now, the damage caused by PKU, which again, it's phenylketonuria, can begin weeks after the baby has started drinking breast milk or formula. And babies with PKU need foods low in, in phenylalanine to prevent severe brain damage. And it's important to find this disease early. All babies in the United States are tested for PKU right after birth. And of course, to have the disease, you must inherit the gene from each parent. Now, a blood sample for PKU is usually taken from the baby's heel called the heel stick and this test is done in the first few days after birth as early as 24 to 72 hours after birth and a follow-up test is usually done at, at age 7 to 10 days and of course a urine PKU test is done on a baby who did not have a blood test and who is older than six weeks now as you can see from the chart uh, we see the puncture sites highlighted in orange we must stay in those puncture sites as you can see there are lateral plantar nerves and medial plantar nerves that we must avoid and also lateral and medial plantar artery so we must stay within the puncture sites when doing a neonate capillary heel stick specifically for a pku or any other type of blood test now when obtaining a specimen through a capillary heel stick we must remember a number of steps one warm the infant's foot make sure we have a heating pad we put it on the foot for at least up to 30 to 60 seconds to get blood flow do not uh, attempt a puncture site on a foot that has not been warm now 70 percent isopropyl alcohol is also used to clean the site thoroughly uh, we let that air dry we do not want the alcohol to contaminate any blood samples that we obtain and of course we puncture the infant's heel as highlighted in the orange puncture site also, we, we, on the lancets, we do not use anything longer in depth uh, other than a 2.0 millimeter. The lowest we use typically is 1.8 millimeter in depth up to a 2.0 millimeter in depth. Anything larger than a 2.0 millimeter can either cause damage to the foot, nerve damage, or even come close to the bone. So always use a 2.0 millimeter or less for a capillary heel stick. Uh, next, we wipe away the first drop of blood with a sterile gauze. We allow the second drop to form by spontaneous free flow of blood. Sometimes we have to squeeze the heel if we're doing a PKU. We need to squeeze the heel and get a good drops of blood to fill the circles on the sheet in the picture below. We got to make sure that those uh, the blood fills the circles completely, is not smudged or outside the circle line. So sometimes we need to squeeze the foot. Or we use micro collection tubes if we're doing blood tests for the lab. The order of draw is lavender is first, then all other tubes in no specific order. So these are with micro collection tubes, lavender first, and then all other tubes. And typically when you take those up to the labs, we got to keep them in inverting at all the way up to the lab so they don't clot. Also, elevate the infant's foot above the body, wipe the puncture area with a sterile gauze and apply a bandage as needed. And make sure you check your area for any trash. We don't want to leave anything behind that the baby can get a hold of and put in their mouth or cause harm. Check for the lancet, check for trash and the gauze, anything extra, even a bandage on their foot. We must make sure that is secure. If a bandage is not needed, then don't put one on. But make sure the area is clean. All right, now let's talk about butterflies on infants. Note, if using a butterfly, use a 23 gauge needle and pediatric tubes only. We do not use adult standard size needles, 21 or 22, and we do not use standard adult size collection tubes. The vacuum is too great. They, we cannot take enough uh, blood into those tubes. The volume is gonna be less. So we need to make sure we use the pediatric tubes and the 23 gauge needle. For small children and infants, we attach the butterfly device to a syringe and withdraw appropriate amount of blood. Now, the question is, what is the absolute blood draw minimum and maximums? Let's take a look. All right, number one, 
When collecting blood samples from pediatric patients, it is essential for the phlebotomist to know the absolute minimums required for the test being performed. Drawing too much blood at one time from a pediatric patient can pose a health risk, namely anemia, cardiac arrest, and even death. Drawing not enough may result in the patient having to be redrawn if the laboratory can't perform the test. Number two, should a physician order several tests requiring a significant amount of blood to be drawn, it may be necessary to contact the patient's physician to notify of the total blood volumes required and follow their instructions. The physician can then decide whether the blood will be drawn all at once or spread out over a period of time. For requests greater than the maximum draw, physician's approval must be attained prior to the blood draw. Number three. Check with the laboratory to verify absolute minimum volumes if necessary. If the test ordered is to be sent to a reference laboratory, you may need them to request that information from that laboratory as well. And number four, use the following guidelines to determine pediatric maximum blood volumes permitted to be drawn from patients based on weight. Let's take a look. So as we take a look at this chart, we can see patients weight in pounds and kilograms. Also, we can see the maximum blood drawn volume MLS in one blood draw and maximum blood drawn in a 30 day period MLS. So for example, if we look at a baby who's 6.6 .6 pounds, we can see that the maximum drawn volume MLS in one blood draw is six MLS. And within a 30 day period, MLS is 23. And we do not exceed those MLS. Why? Because we can, we can uh, create a health risk for the child, namely anemia, cardiac arrest, and even death. So make sure you check your charts and your laboratories. Make sure you follow the proper weight versus maximum blood volume of an MLS in one blood draw and also in a 30 day period. Okay, let's talk about blood cultures and a couple of things you need to keep in mind when dealing with blood cultures with infants and neonates, especially with also with adults. Each culture will consist of an aerobic and anaerobic bottle set using aseptic technique. For each episode of bacteremia, blood should be collected from two separate sites. Thus, a total of two cultures or four bottles, which is two sets, will be collected per episode of bacteremia. Now, looking at the blood volume chart, we have adults greater than 16 years. We have aerobic and anaerobic bottle, two separate sites drawn, two, two separate venipuncture sites, eight to 10 MLS collected, volume per bottle. Now for children under 10 years, less than 10 years, we got a C below or per prescriber. Typically we have two separate sites and the minimum one ml up to five mls preferred. And again, if you look at children greater than 10 years, we have an aerobic and anaerobic or per prescriber, two separate venipuncture sites, five to eight mls uh, volume per bottle. Now, orders of the prescriber will be most important for pediatric bacteremia because the volume collected should not exceed 1% of the patient's total blood volume. So we need to make sure we check with the physician, check with the laboratory to make sure that we're not collecting greater volume per bottle for infants or neonates. Again, we can cause great health risk. We can cause anemia, cardiac arrest, and even death. So check with your laboratory, check with the physician if required or if needed. And again, check the policies and procedures for blood culture regarding the age group and body weight so we do not exceed the amount of volumes per bottle. Now, when collecting for blood cultures, the venipuncture preparation for the site is typically the same, except now you're using blood culture bottles. You'll be using a butterfly with an attached uh, adapter at the end, 21 gauge for adults, 23 gauge for infants or neonates for blood culture collection. Now, a couple things you need to remember. We must clean the bottle tops of vacuum tubes or culture bottles with an alcohol swab. So we pop the caps off the blood cultures and swipe them down with the alcohol. Then carefully prepare proposed venipuncture site by scrubbing with chlorhexidine based antiseptic applicator. You're going to use CHG 2% for infants less than three months and allowing to air dry for 60 seconds. Next, we inoculate the aerobic bottle first then anaerobic bottle by inserting bottle into the sleeve of the device and then mix gently after inoculation. So again, aerobic first and then anaerobic. If we're using a syringe and we've collected the blood, 
we put the blood into the aerobic first, transfer into the aerobic, and then transfer into the anaerobic last. So again, make sure that we clean the bottle tops. We use a chlorhexidine-based antiseptic to scrub down the site. CHD 2% for infants, less than three months. Dry for 60 seconds. Aerobic first, anaerobic second, and then mix gently after inoculation. All right, this concludes our PowerPoint presentations presented by Phlebotomy Solutions. For more information, please visit phlebotomysolutions.org.